So, you're staring at the screen, fingers twitching as the words, you died, mock you for the hundredth time. That's really frustrating. But did you know that this soul-crushing frustration is exactly what keeps millions of gamers coming back for more? If you want to have such experience, this video is for you. Today, I'll be showcasing some of the hardest games that you can play right now. So, without further ado, let's get started. Kicking off our list is Returnal, a game that'll make you feel like you're stuck in a never-ending loop of pain and suffering. And guess what? That's exactly what it is. This roguelike shooter throws you into a hostile alien world where death means starting all over again. Fun, right? I remember my first time playing Returnal. I thought, hey, this doesn't seem so bad. Oh, how wrong I was. Two hours later, I was curled up in a fetal position, questioning my gaming skills. The game's bullet hell combat combined with its roguelike elements makes for a brutal experience. You'll die and die and die some more. But here's the kicker. Each death is a chance to learn and get better. The game's stunning visuals and atmospheric sound design almost make you forget how much you're suffering. Almost. But when you're dodging a hailstorm of alien projectiles while trying to figure out what the heck is going on with the story, you'll be too busy sweating to appreciate the aesthetics. Returnal's difficulty comes from its unforgiving nature. One wrong move and it's back to square one. But when you finally beat that boss that's been kicking your butt for hours, the feeling is indescribable. Next up, we have Sifu, a game that takes the phrase, practice makes perfect, to a whole new level. This kung fu beat-em-up is all about mastering the art of combat, and boy, does it make you work for it. This game demands precision, timing, and a whole lot of patience. It's like trying to perform ballet while someone's throwing punches at you, graceful yet brutal. The game's unique aging mechanic adds another layer of difficulty. Every time you die, you age. The older you get, the harder you hit, but the less health you have. It's a constant balancing act that keeps you on your toes. And let me tell you, seeing your character go from young and spry to old and grizzled in the span of one level is a humbling experience. But here's the thing about Sifu. It's hard, but it's fair. Every defeat is a lesson, every victory earned. The game doesn't hold your hand, it slaps it away and tells you to figure it out yourself. And when you finally master that perfect combo, dodging and weaving through enemies like a kung fu master, it's pure bliss. As the game so aptly puts it, kung fu means mastery through practice. And practice you will over and over again. But trust me, the journey is worth it. Just don't be surprised if you start throwing out kung fu moves in your sleep. Up next, we have Cuphead, the game that looks like a charming 1930s cartoon but plays like a nightmare wrapped in a fever dream. Don't let those cute, hand-drawn visuals fool you. This game is here to crush your spirit and test your reflexes. I remember booting up Cuphead for the first time thinking, how hard can a game about anthropomorphic cups be? The answer, hard, very, very hard. This run and gun platformer throws everything but the kitchen sink at you, and then it throws that too, just for good measure. The game's difficulty comes from its relentless boss battles and precise platforming sections. You'll need lightning fast reflexes and the patience of a saint to make it through. And just when you think you've got a handle on things, the game throws a curveball at you. It's like trying to juggle while riding a unicycle on a tightrope over a pit of lava. But here's the thing about Cuphead. It's addictive. Despite the countless deaths and frustrated yells, you'll keep coming back for more. The satisfaction of finally beating a boss after what feels like the hundredth try is unparalleled. Plus, the game's incredible art style and jazzy soundtrack make the pain a little more bearable. As the game so eloquently puts it, don't deal with the devil. But in this case, dealing with the devil might just be worth it for the sheer satisfaction of overcoming its challenges. Just be prepared for a lot of you died screens along the way. <laughs> Moving forward, we have Neo 2, a game that takes the Souls-like formula and cranks it up to 11. 
If you thought Dark Souls was tough, Neo 2 is here to laugh in your face and then proceed to bash it in with a variety of Japanese weapons. This game doesn't just demand skill, it demands mastery. The combat system is deep and complex, with stances, key pulses, and yokai abilities to manage. The game's difficulty stems from its unforgiving combat and the sheer variety of ways it can kill you. Enemies are relentless, bosses are nightmarish, and even the environment seems to be out to get you. And don't even get me started on the Dark Realm sections. It's like the game decided regular difficulty wasn't enough, so it created hell zones just to spice things up. But here's the thing, Neo 2 is hard, but it's also incredibly rewarding. The combat, once you get the hang of it, is some of the most satisfying in any action game. Landing a perfect combo, switching stances mid-fight, and taking down a tough boss feels absolutely incredible. As one of the most famous samurai quote puts it, a samurai must always be prepared to die, and die you will over and over again. But each death is a lesson, each victory a triumph. Just be prepared for a long, difficult journey. Now, let's talk about Geometry Dash, a game that proves sometimes the simplest concepts can be the most infuriating. This rhythm-based platformer might look cute and colorful, but don't be fooled. It's here to test your reflexes and your sanity. I remember downloading Geometry Dash thinking it would be a fun, casual game to play on my phone. Little did I know I was about to embark on a journey of pixel-perfect jumps and rage-inducing deaths. The premise is simple. Guide your little geometric hero through a series of obstacles in time with the music. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. The difficulty in Geometry Dash comes from its demand for absolute precision. One mistimed jump, one pixel off, and it's back to the start. And when you're dealing with levels that can last several minutes, that restart button becomes your worst enemy. It's like trying to thread a needle while riding a roller coaster. Theoretically possible, but in practice, good luck about that. But here's the kicker. Despite the frustration, despite the countless restarts, Geometry Dash is addictive as hell. There's something about the combination of music, rhythm, and platforming that keeps you coming back for more. And when you finally clear that level you've been stuck on for hours, it's pure euphoria. As the game itself puts it, press jump to jump. Simple instructions for a deceptively difficult game. Just be prepared for a lot of moments asking yourself why the hell did you press jump? Up next, we have Hollow Knight. This is the game that lures you in with its beautiful, hand-drawn art style and haunting music, only to crush your spirit with its brutal difficulty. This Metroidvania masterpiece is as challenging as it is captivating. When I first started Hollow Knight, I was immediately drawn in by its atmospheric world and cute protagonist. But don't let the adorable knight fool you, because this game is here to test your mettle. The difficulty in Hollow Knight comes from its combination of precise platforming, tough combat, and intricate level design. One of the most challenging aspects of Hollow Knight is its boss fights. These epic encounters will test everything you've learned, and then some. I still have nightmares about the Nightmare King Grimm. That fight isn't just difficult, it's like trying to perform a ballet while avoiding a flamethrower. But here's the thing about Hollow Knight. Its difficulty is part of its charm. Every area you explore, every secret you uncover, every boss you defeat feels earned. The game doesn't hold your hand, it pushes you into the deep end and tells you to swim. And when you finally do, it's incredibly satisfying. If you want some challenging Metroidvania, then feel free to test your skills in Hollow Knight. <laughs> Next up, we have Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Guys, don't let the colorful graphics and goofy protagonist fool you. This game is here to test your platforming skills and your patience. Crash Bandicoot 4 takes everything that made the original trilogy challenging and cranks it up to the max. 
The precision required for some of these jumps is insane. The difficulty in the game comes from its combination of precise platforming, tricky level design, and the sheer number of collectibles. Trying to get all the boxes in a level? All I can say is that I hope luck is in your side. You'll be replaying levels more times than you can count, desperately searching for that one box you missed. And don't even get me started on the perfect relic runs. Completing a level without dying once? It's enough to make a grown gamer cry. But despite the frustration, Crash Bandicoot 4 is incredibly fun. The level design is creative, the different playable characters add variety. Plus, who can resist Crash's goofy grin, even as he plummets to his death for the hundredth time? The game is satisfyingly difficult, and I hope you can perfectly beat all levels. Stop! Now, let's talk about Elden Ring the game that took the world by storm and left a trail of broken controllers in its wake. This open world epic from the creators of Dark Souls is as beautiful as it is brutal. Personally, I love these kind of games. I already finished several from software titles, but I gotta admit that I'm still on my way to facing millennia. Elden Ring doesn't just challenge you because it will push you to the limit. The difficulty in Elden Ring comes from its unforgiving combat, cryptic storytelling, and the sheer number of ways it can kill you. Bosses that can one-shot you? Check. Areas that inflict instant death? You bet. NPCs with quest lines so obscure you need a PhD to figure them out? Absolutely. It's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube while blindfolded and being chased by a bear. However, this kind of difficulty is what makes Elden Ring the Elden Ring we know today. Every victory feels earned, every discovery meaningful. If you haven't played this game before and want to try it out, just prepare yourself to see the death screen frequently. Bro, this game is the definition of a hard game. Up next, we have Dark Souls 3, the game that turns get good from a meme into a lifestyle. This action RPG is the culmination of From Software's sadistic design philosophy, and boy, does it deliver on the pain. This game takes everything that made the series famous. Punishing difficulty, cryptic lore, and epic boss fights. It's like trying to climb Mount Everest in roller skates while being chased by those hungry wolves. The difficulty in Dark Souls 3 comes from its relentless enemies. Intricate level design and boss fights that'll make you question your life choices. Every area is a new challenge, every enemy a potential death sentence. But this is actually what makes Dark Souls 3 successful. The challenges that you'll face is the actual reward of the game. Every boss you defeat, every area you conquer feels like a genuine achievement. Now, if you're confused which FromSoft title you should play, I recommend that you finish this video as I have one more that will surely catch your attention. Up next, we have Super Meat Boy Forever. Similar to the previous title, this is a fast-paced platformer that continues the story of the original Super Meat Boy. This time, Meat Boy and Bandage Girl have settled down and started a family. Their peaceful life is shattered when Dr. Fetus kidnaps their baby, Nugget. Determined to save their child, Meat Boy and Bandage Girl set off on an epic quest. This punishing platformer will have you bouncing off walls, literally and figuratively. The catch, everything, and I mean everything, wants to turn you into ground beef. The game's difficulty comes from its ingenious level design. Each stage is a carefully crafted death trap, filled with saw blades, homing missiles, and gaps so precise you'll need a microscope to measure your jumps. Super Meat Boy's rapid respawn system keeps you in the action, turning what could be a controller-throwing experience into an addictive loop of trial and error. But wait, there's more. Just when you think you've mastered a level, Super Meat Boy throws a curveball with its Dark World versions. 
these remixed stages take the difficulty and crank it up to 11. The game also features unlockable characters, each with their own unique abilities that completely change how you approach levels. Want to wall jump indefinitely? There's a character for that. Prefer to float like a feather? Yep, got one of those too. It's like having multiple games in one, each more challenging than the last. Super Meat Boy isn't just hard, it's a masterclass in tight game design that keeps you coming back for more punishment. So if you're ready for a game that'll push your platforming skills to the limit and beyond, Super Meat Boy Forever is waiting for you. Next up, we've got Celeste, a game that takes the concept of an uphill battle and turns it into a vertical odyssey of self-discovery and pixelated pain. Celeste follows Madeline, a young woman determined to climb the titular mountain. But this is no leisurely hike. The mountain throws everything it's got at you. Precise platforming, time-sensitive dashes, and environmental hazards that seem to have a personal vendetta against your very existence. The game's difficulty curve is as steep as the mountain itself, and apart from these challenging journeys, the game will slowly throw you these touching narratives about anxiety, self-doubt, and perseverance through its punishing gameplay. As you help Madeline overcome her inner struggles, you'll find yourself pushing through your own frustrations, growing both as a player and a person. Celeste is an incredible balance between frustration and reward. Every screen is a new puzzle, a new chance to prove yourself. And when you finally conquer that one room that's been haunting your dreams, pure bliss. The game also features an assist mode, allowing players to tailor the difficulty to their needs. Celeste is a testament to perseverance, both in-game and in real life. Just be prepared for a lot of deaths and some serious finger-cramping sessions. But trust me, the view from the top of the mountain is worth it. Next on the list is Bloodborne, the game that turns Victorian Gothic horror into a brutal dance of death and rebirth. This From Software masterpiece takes the Souls formula and injects it with a healthy dose of cosmic horror and fast-paced combat. When I first stepped into the streets of Yarnum, I thought I was prepared. I'd played Dark Souls after all. Oh, how wrong I was. Bloodborne doesn't just challenge you. It grabs you by the collar and throws you into a nightmare realm where everything wants to kill you. And I mean everything. The difficulty in Bloodborne comes from its aggressive combat system, relentless enemies, and the constant sense of dread it instills. Gone are the shields and careful approaches of Dark Souls. Because here, it's all about quick reflexes and even quicker attacks. It's like trying to perform a waltz in the middle of a mosh pit. One wrong step and you're done for. But here's the thing about Bloodborne. Its perfect difficulty is part of its charm. The game rewards aggression and punishes hesitation. Every victory feels earned. Every boss defeated a true triumph. And when you finally unravel the cosmic mysteries at the heart of the game, it's a feeling like no other. Now, if you're like me who wants these kind of challenges, then you can't go wrong with Bloodborne. And to finally conclude our list, we have Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Among all the games on this list, Sekiro is my favorite. Set in a fantastical version of Feudal Japan, this game puts you in the shoes of Wolf, a shinobi on a mission to rescue his young lord. But don't expect to be sneaking around and insta-killing enemies from the shadows. You can't do that because Sekiro wants you front and center, clashing swords with enemies in duels that'll test every reflex you didn't even know you had. The game's combat revolves around the posture system, where the goal is to break your enemy's stance rather than just whittling down their health. It's like a deadly game of rock-paper-scissors, where you need to time your attacks, deflections, and counters perfectly. And when I say perfectly, I mean it. 
Sekiro's timing windows are tighter than a drum, and the game punishes button mashing with swift and brutal efficiency. It's less hack and slash and more rhythmic dance of death. Miss a beat, and you're kissing the tatami mats. But Sekiro isn't content with just being a challenging combat game. It throws in stealth elements, a grappling hook for vertical exploration, and prosthetic tools that range from firecrackers to an axe that can split shields. Mastering all these elements is key to survival, especially when facing the game's nightmarish bosses. Speaking of bosses, Sekiro's are some of the most memorable and frustrating in gaming history. From the lightning-fast Lady Butterfly to the monstrous Guardian Ape, each boss is a skill check that'll have you questioning whether you've actually learned anything since you started playing. Sekiro is kind of addictive. The rush you get from perfectly deflecting a flurry of attacks or landing that final death blow on a boss that's killed you dozens of times is unmatched. You'll die and die and die again, but each death is a lesson that you'll surely remember upon revival. So there you have it, folks, the games that'll push you to your limits and beyond. Which of these games broke you? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content that'll make your thumbs cry. Until next time, keep gaming, and remember, in these games, death is just the beginning of your journey.